Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are right now. And the recording is posted to our website so you can watch it at your convenience. Uh, both the live show and the archive recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do um, share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not um, Nebraska, from Nebraska, we, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska. And that is for all types of libraries. So you will see things on our show that are for public libraries, K-12, academics and colleges, corrections, museums, um, really our only criteria that it's some sort of a library. And we do shows about things, libraries, something um, libraries are doing, some things we think they might be, you know, could be doing, uh, services and products that we uh, think may be of interest or for Nebraska libraries that we offer here via the Library Commission. So we have a mixture of things here on the show. Sometimes they're book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of those services and products. So um, it really runs the gamut. So anybody who has any interest in libraries should be able to find something that is of interest or use to them. We do have, as I mentioned, uh, some sessions that our uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff present on things that we offer here. Um, but we do bring in guest speakers, and that is what we have this morning from my home state of New York. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the line with us today this morning is uh, Shante Hope. Good morning. Good morning. And she is from the SUNY Maritime College, as you can see from the slides there, which is in the Bronx. I'm from upstate New York. This is downstate. It's all good. It's all New York. We're all New York at heart. <laughs> Um, and she's going to talk about this really cool library, a very unique situation. I'm not sure if there's others like yours, but um, there that um, is in an actual old uh, fort. So I'm just going to hand it over to you to talk to us, share about your library there. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Shante Hope. And today we're going to be speaking about Life at Fort Schuyler, the challenges faced at SUNY Maritime College Library. So the picture that I have here is the actual full picture of the campus. So I'm just going to put my pointer here just to show you a few things. So the library is right in this area here, as it says, you are here. Mm -hmm. And also, if you haven't noticed, there is a bridge that goes right over campus. OK, and this is the <laughs> This is the Throgneck Bridge that connects um, the east part of the Bronx, and it also connects the Bay Terrace of Queens, okay? Mm -hmm. And this was built after the campus. So this is something that I look up at every day so I can see the traffic in case I need to get on the bridge to go to Queens. So I have a... Should I go now? Should I wait? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so I have all of the front controls for the Throgsnick Bridge. Um, and then also here is our training ship. And our training ship comes back on Friday. And either the cadets have been on the ship for about 45 days or 90 days. Their last big stop was in Iceland. Oh, so, wow. Um, they're coming back on Friday, and it's a really big show when they come back home. Um, so yeah, so this is our beautiful campus, and um, just keep in mind how the campus looks. This is the floor, which we'll talk about, and the entrance of the library is further down. But just keep in mind of how the the campus looks, all right? So it's all on an island there. It's yes, it's the Throgsnick Peninsula. Yep, yep, yeah. it's the Throgsnick Peninsula. Okay, so just a little bit about me. Um, I am now the Student Experience and Outreach Librarian. Before I was the Instruction Librarian, as you may have seen in the bio, but now I'm the Student Experience Outreach Librarian, which is more for user engagement. Um, I've been a librarian roughly about 10 plus years, but I've been in Maritime for two. Um, my day to day contains, you know, planning and coordinating events, which includes our library lecture series, which we have four to six, um, and they vary from different topics, mainly being the root, which is Maritime. And then we also have the Center for Teaching Excellence workshops, um, which is more of a professional development aspect for our faculty. Um, and then, of course, I do library instruction and reference one-on-one -on -one help. And the last bullet here is this is my first webinar presentation. So I thank you all for um, attending my session to hear more about um, Fort Schuyler and SUNY Maritime College. 
And just to give you a little tidbit for all of you librarians out here, a trained librarian is a powerful search engine with a heart. So um, one of my students gave that to me. I think he or she found it on the internet. So ever since they gave it to me, I just it just stuck with me and I just wanted to share that with you as well. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> So let's get a little to a little bit about Fort Schuyler. So Fort Schuyler, this is a picture shot taken um, from inside the fort, which is called St. Mary's Pentagon. It is, um, it's where we have all our graduations. And if we have any picnics or anything like that, everything is housed in here. Now, the library is not the only um, department in the fort. We also have um, the Maritime Transportation Department, um, our Humanity Department, and we also have the administrative wing, which contains the provost and the president and some financial officers as well. Um, so the fort is heavily, heavily used. Um, and then we also have a bridge simulator that the students use for their capstone project. Um, so it's supposed to replicate them being on the ship. Mostly the ship is on the Hudson River. So they get to see how it will look from um, the Statue of Liberty. Um, so different areas of that. Um, so this is just one shot taken from inside Fort Schuyler. And the Fort Schuyler was named after Major General Philip Schuyler of the Continental Army. Um, his roots live deeply here at Maritime College. All right. So just a little bit of construction about Fort Schuyler. Um, construction began in 1833 and it was finished in 1856. And roughly $740,000 was spent on construction, which sounds pretty cheap today. <laughs> um, and the lack of the skilled masons slowed down the construction. And the actual fort is made out of granite, which was shipped from Greenwich, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And it was established this peninsula from Throg the Throgs Neck Peninsula that were on now was established as Schuylerville. So this is technically, we're in the Bronx, but we're under the Throgs Neck Bridge and we're in Throgs Neck, but it's also Schuylerville. So whatever name you would like to call it, <laughs> that's where we are. Well, that's um, not confusing for New Yorkers because there's an upstate city. Right. <laughs> Schuylerville in upstate New York, right. And yes, and I, I looked at that too and I was like, what? But yes, Schuylerville is <laughs> So Schuylerville in the Bronx stretches all the way through East Tremont, which is one of the longest roads in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and it stretches all the way through there. And there's a lot of pretty restaurants and great scenery on Schuylerville. So mm -hmm. not to get confused with Schuylerville, New York. Which is up <laughs> capital, Albany, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So the picture, the picture that we have here is before the actual um, maritime um, maritime college was built. So this is the original blueprint of um, how uh, the Throgneck Peninsula looked. All right. So a little description about Fort Schuyler is the example of a French bastion fort. Um, there are other forts like it, but this was one of this is a great example of Fort Schuyler. And we have three bastions here, and these are the bastions here. We have one, two, and three, and they overlook the East River. Okay, and it's shaped like a pentagon, which is rumored to be um, a model design of the actual U.S. Pentagon, um, and it was meant to hold 1,250 men and three pieces of armaments, which I found out today was pretty much weapons. I didn't even know that name. <laughs> and then there are tunnels that interconnect the rooms in the fort. Mm -hmm. Any of us do not know where these tunnels are. So there's supposedly a fallout shelter as well that's supposed to connect these tunnels, but that is a mystery at SUNY Maritime College. So there's a lot of mysteries in history here. Um, originally, there was no indoor plumbing and the mess halls and officer quarters were outside of the fort. So this is just a little description about Fort Schuyler and how beautiful it is. It's, you take it, as, as, as we get into the pictures later on, this is a really a beautiful, beautiful um, place to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before it was a college, okay, um, there was other things that were happening here besides just being a fort. Um, it was identified as a shore base for the Maritime Academy. And then Robert Moses, who wanted to convert the site into a um, city park, but eventually we got our way and became a Maritime Academy and it prevailed. And that was at least signed by um, President-elect Roosevelt um, in 1934. And in 1948, we 
officially joined SUNY and became SUNY Maritime College. So that is just a little bit of history. And in the bibliography at the end of this slide, um, at, at the end of the show, we'll have all of the bibliographies and information on how you um, SUNY Maritime became a college and so, so forth and so forth. All right. And those so, of you who are not don't know New York, SUNY is the State University of New York. That's the SUNY, yes. that's the um, state college system, which yes. is 60 something. I can't yes, know. 64 campuses. 64 yes. campuses across the state as a, as a whole network of colleges. Yes, and, I, and, I'm, and I meant to say I'm that. I'm a graduate too. from two of those colleges myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Undergraduate and my library degree. Yeah. Yes, see, Krista, you have some roots here too. I do. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. So we became a part of SUNY. So a little bit about the Stephen B. Luce Library. Um, it was named after Stephen Bleeker Luce, who was the U.S. Admiral, um, and he was also the founder of the. He was the first founder and the first president of the Naval War College um, in 1884 and 1886. So we decided to name his name. Well, we didn't decide, but his name. His namesake was for this library. So that's how we honor him. So just to get into a little bit about the library as well as this picture here on the right, this picture was taken a little bit after 1856. According to our archives, we're not sure of when this picture was actually taken, but this is the actual library gutted out um, and how it looks back then before it became a, a mess deck, and I'll explain that to you in a second. But this is how the actual library is here. And the library has four bays. So this is one bay where this light is, this is two, this is three, and the last one over there is bay four. So we have each different bay in our library as well. So also, the library is two floors. But we don't say floors, we say above and below, just like the military. Um, we say fort above and fort below. So if students are looking for a class in the fort, we'll say you're in classroom A34, which floor is a floor above, and B56, floor below. So we do not say floor one and floor two. Okay, so we also have 25,000 physical resources, and our physical resources Physical resources include our books and our cereals. And then we have 25 full stacks. All of our stacks, which is our circulation collection, is upstairs above, okay? And then I'll show you the pictures in a little bit. And then we have 15 front-facing stacks. Um, then we have 12 desktop computers, two scanners, two printers. And then we also have some special collections. And our special collections include the Maritime Heritage Room. Um, the Maritime Heritage Room contains all of our rare books, and we have roughly about 5,000 rare books. Um, we also have a ship library. So on the training ship that comes back on Friday, we also have a ship library. So every year we have a new library that goes out. Um, so if you're interested in applying, that goes out every summer. And we, we accept the librarian on the ship when they're on the ship. There's a librarian on the ship. So you will live just like how a cadet lives on the mm -hmm. ship for 40 or 90 days. So and if anybody is interested in that, we have that every year. Um, and then we also have our archival collection. Um, and our archival collection contains some of these beautiful pictures that you see in our presentation. Mm -hmm. And we also house the, um, I just got to, well, lost a blank here. We also have our um, Sailor Snug Harbor collection as well. And the Sailor H Snug Harbor collection, a little bit about it, is the first um, mainly like nursing home for Army vets. And that was the first one. And we have all of that collection here. I'm not the archivist here, but we do have a permanent loan. So it's not ours, but it lives here in our collection. And then we have 25 ship models that have been gifted to the library. And cool. I will show you a few of these ship models, but they, I think it's more than 25 because every day I see a new one. So these <laughs> ship models just come and just make their little home here in our, in our library. All right, so some fun facts about the Stephen B. Blues Library. Um, before it became the library, it was considered the mess deck, which is the cafeteria. And the great thing about that is the original tables that are used today was the same original tables that they used in the mess deck. So that is some rich, rich history that we have those tables. And those tables are not going anywhere. And as soon as there are these long tables, as you will see in a little bit, but those are the original tables. 
And then we also are adjacent to the Maritime Industry Museum, which is the only maritime industry museum in the Bronx. So we get a lot of foot traffic and it's open to the public and everybody is more than welcome to come and visit our library. So those are just some fun facts about um, the Stephen B. Boost Library. And at any time, if there's any questions, Krista, you're gonna let me know, correct? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if anybody has any questions or wanna know more about what um, she's describing or anything in the pictures or the uh, blueprints or whatever, uh, go ahead and type in your question section. Um, if you have your own microphone and you want to ask your question that way, just type in, I have a microphone, please unmute me, and I will do that, and you can um, ask your question yourself. Thank you. So I have a question for all of you today. Um, what do you think, based on the, com this is our new, so just a little, um, a little heads up, this is our library, how it looks today. So if you take all of the pictures that I've shown you and all the descriptions that I described, this is how our library looks today. And it is a narrow, one long hallway, pretty much. And here again is our above, and here is our below. Um, so just quickly, well, what you see here, can you tell me any of the challenges that you think we face right now? Just by this picture, it could be anything. Any challenges that you think we are facing right now? Yeah, what do you guys think? Type into the questions. I know if you, I have a few ideas, but... Um... I'll wait and see what other people say. <laughs> yeah, just one word. Um, um, oh, someone says heating is how they oh, heating yes, yes, yes. and maybe heating and cooling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Mm -hmm. um, ADA requirements. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, something I was thinking of was um, having to maintain the history of the building, of, mm -hmm. of, the, of it that, um, if it's historical that you can't do so much renovation or changing to it for work for your purposes mm -hmm. as we maintained as, as a historic site potentially. yes yes so this is um considered a permanent um it's a permanent historic site but it's a working function so a working mm -hmm. aspect so as far as ada compliance we cannot change anything because it's considered a historical landmark so we are not allowed to change anything. So that's what makes one of the biggest hurdles for ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of stairs and um, we have, there are, the stairs are aqua stairs. It's not just going straight up the stairs, they're spiral bound stairs. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, so that is one of the biggest challenges that we face. So we notice that we tend to have to go out to the student more um, instead of bringing them into the library. Yeah, share more outreach, <coughs> hence your position, yes. <laughs> So that is one of my we got some more ideas here. Um, effective lighting, depending on where mm -hmm. and um, how your windows. I mean, you'd think a fort wouldn't have many windows by default. You wouldn't want it to. Yep. Um, and internet. How's your internet connectivity? So all of so everyone said all of my whole presentation today. So <laughs> all, of, all of the points you hit. These are all of the challenges that we're facing. And as and every day it keeps growing because we want to make this library a 21st century um, library, but it's so hard because of the history and the richness of this fort. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the things that is in the works that we're trying to propose is to move the library um, to a different place on campus. Um, but that's going to be an uphill battle for us for right now. But we're just trying to make do. We're trying to make do. So the whole point of this presentation as well is for you, if for any of you to give me any ideas or any suggestions on how I can, you know, I can share with my director and my colleagues on how to make this library better. Because right now it's just about four of us and we really want to liven up this library and make it such a more learning experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for those questions. I really appreciate that. All right. So the top 10 challenges that academic librarians face, according to Jen Chen of Wiley, um, number one, we all know is budget. Money is always going to be an issue. <laughs> um, but communicating about changes in the library, declining patient requests for content, career advancement, and keeping up with the changing technolog um, technology um, technical requirements. That is the biggest challenge that we are facing right now. Um, and that's why that number five is highlighted because we didn't realize how much technology we need. And mm -hmm. one of the, another one of, of our 
things in the works is we're trying to create a maker space um, in the library. Um, but that is going to raise some big concerns and I'll show you a little bit in my presentation as well. But going into the rest of the challenges is understanding research trends and the library's role in the research cycle, staying current on policy changes, managing library operations and tracking performance, conveying the value of librarians to research, and managing, um, managing continuous transitions from print to a digital-based collection. So these are just the challenges that even though everybody we, we all know, but it's laid out for us what our challenges are. Um, so I just wanted to show you that and share that with you. Okay, so the library has gone through some renovations since 2014. So I'm going to show you just some of the changes that we have here for right now. All right. So this is our circulation slash information, I mean, reference desk and our information desk as well. Um, as you can see, there are some changes here for us. So our latest change is we have here is our monthly heritage, um, heritage display. Now, as you can see from before, this was open stacks. Mm -hmm. And we got rid of these open stacks to make way for our new display. Um, so before all here was all of our bound periodicals, and now we made it our new place for our new books and new collections. And then we also have more bound periodicals here, but now this is a place for our DVDs. So we figured these are new places for um, um, to showcase new material. Before we only had about six computers, now we have about 12, um, and they stand a little bit more to the side here as well. And then our countertop has changed. Um, this it looks was much brighter and lighter in there now. Just that couple of different changes there. Yes. So this countertop was donated to us from Kings Point. So Kings Point is our um, our neighborhood maritime uh, college. It is also our rival as well. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this piece was donated to um, to. To, to us by them. So we greatly appreciate that. Even though we have a good livelihood, um, you know, they still give us pieces of, um, of furniture. But everything else still remained the same. Now to move this desk is very hard because we thought about um, getting rid of our reference desk and making it just full throttle for student use. But mm -hmm. to get rid of this desk is extremely heavy and is extremely expensive. So that's why we keep the desk. Um, that's why it's here. So these are mainly, mainly the changes that we have for our circulation and reference desk as well. Okay, so also what happened from 2014 was a new office. So behind here was all of this was just a wall and there was nothing behind it. But to have more outreach in the library and have more departments in the library, we have our academic success center, which is our academic coach, which is Anna Mendieta, and she's from Student Affairs. So her office is here, which greatly helps us with our traffic for more students to get more students here at the library. So they knocked all of this down to build a new office and they added an additional unisex bathroom. So that's what we have here. And then we had a cafe and I'll explain that in a second. But this is all of our new office. This is our new office here. And then we have the opposite end, which we call the long haul. And this is the additional um, additional uh, position of the library. So this side is the entrance of the library. And this is the rear, more the rear end. So now we have all our bound periodicals. And then we also have, before 2014, was all of our um, physical serials, but they were all out facing. But we needed more space for our bound periodicals. So we, met, we made all of the bound periodicals down here. So if you're wondering where our collection is, all the collection is upstairs. The whole circulation collection is upstairs, as well as our Maritime Heritage Room and our archives is um, below but yes all of our um collection is upstairs which makes a big issue as well with ada compliance because all of our collection is mainly upstairs and there's um, only stairs there's only the staircase to get there there's only the staircase to get there mm -hmm. we have a dumb waiter but the dumb waiter is for the books i don't think anybody <laughs> yes so yes so this is the opposite end and these are the original tables from the mess deck 
that they had in the past before it was a library. So yeah, those we, are awesome tables. You should never get rid of those. I can tell from those pictures. <laughs> yeah, I think I think our alumni. If we ever got rid of these these tables, I think our alumni will be after us. <laughs> so yes. And then right here in the middle is our globe, which is a staple for um, the Stephen B. Goose Library. Um, I'm not sure where who was donated from because that's still a big mystery, but it's it's been there since the beginning of Stephen B. Goose Library. And then up here on the top here, what we call the penthouse, is that is where the library director sits. Yeah. So um, she overlooks us and you know we see her too if we go far enough back. <laughs> All right, so as you saw before, where we had a cafe, which was beautiful, I wasn't here for that, but it would have been really nice to have the cafe in here. The cafe has been moved to another bastion, um, so it's not long, no longer in the library. So it became an awkward space, so we decided to make it a display area. Um, as you can see, it, it's right under the stairs, so we have this awkward angle here. Mm -hmm. um, and it does have lighting, but it's very, very hard for us to put in the exhibits here because we didn't really know what else we could do with it. We thought about making it like the circulation, just mainly circulation or reference area, but it's too deep in under the stairs for anyone to see. Mm -hmm. So we just decided to make it a, a display area. And the this current display that we have now is Constitution Day. Um, and our new Constitution Day is going to be um, suffrage, the suffrage movement for this year. Um, cool. So that's why we have our Constitution displayed here. All right, so this is the opposite end of the long haul. All right, so if you notice here in 2014, this was all open stacks, all open stacks. And you see our ship models here that always come they just always appear we have our ship models here and then we have more of the tables here so three um original mess deck tables fit in each bay so as i mentioned in the earlier slides we have each bay so this is bay two this is bay three and this area is bay four and bay four we have um, mainly our library lecture series um that's when we invite as I mentioned earlier, that's how I coordinate the events. Um, we have our library lecture series in Bay 4. So another challenge that we have is that sometimes the library lectures can get pretty loud. And then when people are trying to study, it makes it the library loud. So that is another challenge that we face. So right over here, like I said, the stacks. But if we look at 2019, we have built uh, Academic Success Center, which is our library, also library instruction room. And we share this with student affairs. So this room is adjacent to three study rooms. And um, this is one of the study rooms in the back here. But this room, everyone loves on campus. Everyone loves to come to this room either for meetings, classes. So this room gets heavily, heavily used. Um, but we try to keep it for ourselves, but sometimes it's a little bit too hard. But <laughs> this is our this is our active learning classroom. I mean our academic success classroom. And this part of the library is a um is HVAC. It does have AC. Just mm -hmm. this part, just this classroom. So yes, so that is one of our new um one of our new changes that we had, um, it was originally built in 2017, but then we made it more available in 2019. All right, so these are some of the present day challenges that I'm going to get into that you mentioned all before. So one of the challenges that we had was with our new heritage monthly display was the granite. We have the space here, which is about maybe about six inches away from the granite because the granite is uneven. So it's hard for us to place any new fixtures or any new furniture in the library because now we have to keep the granite in mind. And we can't sand the granite, <laughs> you know? So that's and one of the- probably can't actually like physically attach anything to it because no. of the historical- Right. right. Yeah. So it's hard for the wiring as well. So um, they had to, take wiring from actual bookcase, and I'll explain that a little bit, a little wiring from the bookcase to light the actual display. So yeah, so we have to run a lot of wires from each different place and split wires to have electricity run in certain areas. Yes, 
I can work for facilities as well. <laughs> <We're doing this. laughs> I mean, to go through all of this, yeah. <laughs> all right, so then we come back to our lighting. So if you notice that we have the light from the desk, but all of this space back here, darkness, mm -hmm. darkness. The only light that comes from the areas is from the stacks. So each of the stacks have lightings um, built onto the actual stacks so you can see. But if you're not by the stacks, you're in complete darkness. So it's pretty hard for us to, you know, some of the some of the fa some of the um, faculty and the and the students enjoy maybe working like that. But for us to find materials is really really hard. So there's only light from the desk. And then as you can see, the four windows, and this is actually one of the windows that is in my office. Each bay has a window and the window is about maybe a foot, a foot and a half. It's not big at all. So we really don't have a lot of light. The only light is in bay three and there's the only light fixture in that area. So there is minimal lighting in the fort above. So then we also did a huge weeding project where we got rid of about roughly about 15,000 um, physical materials. So we were so gun ho to just move all to, um, to um, push all of the books to the front. But then we realized there are no books, so we don't need, need any light. So we rushed and cut off all the lights in the back and forgot that there is no light in the back. So this whole area, is dark 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 so what we thought was about putting the maker space in this area but that will be another hurdle for us to get so now it just has become the truck stop as you can see all the trucks yes. <laughs> <laughs> um so yes yeah, so these two lights that are here are just actual construction lights just so we can have some type of lighting back here because we also want to be safe with our patrons um when they're passing through and I'll explain that a little bit. So yes, lighting is a big issue that we have here. And then again, we are hot and then we're cold because we do not have any HVAC as well. So actually actual, in the actual library, there is no HVAC. So our offices all have um, AC units and heating units, but in the actual library, there is no HVAC which is raised a problem because it makes for mold and it makes mm -hmm. for dust and it makes it hard for us to work when we're trying to shift because we're so warm. And then the granite can um, retains the temperature. So roughly mm -hmm. in the month of October to November, it's starting to get, it starts to get a little bit colder, but the stones still have the heat from the summer. But when mm -hmm. it gets December, it starts to get cold and then it becomes freezing in the lab. Almost sometimes it could be about 40 degrees outside and it'll feel like about 25 degrees inside. So it's wow. pretty cold. Yes, because it's the granite, the granite holds mm -hmm. on to all of that um, hot and cold. So it's yes. like, like in castles, they had those tapestries on the walls because of the the stone and now mm -hmm. it's just not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Control it a little bit in either side. Yeah. So for our student workers and some of our patients, we have some fans around, but then the fans get really loud because there's so many fans going and then it creates noise. So yes. So HVAC is another issue that we have. But also looking out is St. Mary's Pentagon, which is beautiful outside. Very nice view. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and hiding in the back is the, is the Throg's Neck Bridge, but this is the St. Mary's Pentagon. So we like to leave the blinds open so we can just, you know, look outside and have a beautiful, beautiful view, but we're actually smoldering hot inside. So we can just look outside. <laughs> okay. Also, the library is located far from the rest of campus. So mm. we're here on the fort. And then this is the center of campus. So the center of campus has um, our upcoming student union, has all of the dorms, has the cafeteria, um, the ship store, everything is in the center in the classrooms, all in the center of campus. Mm -hmm. But another major um, area is our science and engineering department. And our science and engineering department is all the way here. Mm -hmm. So that walk on Urban Avenue 
to hear is not really, really fun. Mm -hmm. And especially with our cadets, which are um, the mugs, which are the freshmen, um, part of their part of their freshman year is they're, they're not allowed to walk through campus. They have to work on the out, they have to walk on the outer skirts of hmm. campus. Okay. That's part of their ritual as a freshman. So it makes it harder for us to come in. And they also have to be in cadet uniform when they come to the fort. Um, so it just makes it challenging for the students that want to come to the library to actual study because they have to walk on the outer skirts and then they also have to wear their uniform. So they can't be comfortable and they're walking a distance. They're walking a long distance, yeah. <laughs> so that's another part of my outreach is trying to get them here. And, you know, I don't mind going to these students, but I'd rather um, them come to me so they can experience all the resources that we have and also give us suggestions on how we can be a better asset for them and a better learning community for them. So it's a little bit of give and take. Yeah. Is there any questions so far? Um, yeah, I actually said, did somebody have some questions that you just answered in the description of the campus. Um, what are what are, what are your hours and when are, when are you open um, at the library? And as far as when, you know, the the cadets are on campus and doing things with classes and whatnot. So right now there's summer hours, but during the, during the semester we're open from 8 a.m. to midnight, um, oh. Monday to Thursday, and then Friday we're open from 10 to 6 because usually most of the students go home on Fridays. But then mm -hmm. we resume Saturday and Sunday we're open from 10 a.m. to midnight. So the only day that we're not open till midnight is Fridays. Okay. Yes. And how many cadets are there um, in the college? Yeah, how many people are you are you serving really? So we have about roughly 1,000 cadets, and yeah. the cadets are enrolled in the Coast Guard Academy. Um, Coast Guard, they get their Coast Guard license, and then we also have civilian students, which we have about roughly 200. And civilian mm -hmm. students are just the traditional students that you will see. They're not enrolled to get their Coast Guard license. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Was that all of the questions? Um, well, we have uh, like a series of questions about, and I'm not sure if you're going to talk about this or anything about the, um, the relationship between the library and the um, faculty and being on uh, communication that you have and the committees you're on, uh, any material purchase. I don't know if you're going to get more into that or not. No, I wasn't, but I could definitely save that for the end and I can answer, I can answer all of those questions as well. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll hold on to those. Yeah. Okay. All right. So another challenge that we have have here is that the library has five entrances. Wow. <laughs> so we have five entrances. So I'm going to start on the left. Okay. I mean the right, I'm sorry. And where this is the main entrance. Okay. And this is where St. Mary's Pentagon is. So this is the main entrance. And if you notice, this is the only entrance with the gate. Only uh, entrance. With the gate. Security gates. Yeah. Then we have the other end of the long hall, which is the adjacent to the museum that I mentioned earlier. So this goes through the museum. So imagine going from all the way from the circulation desk to the end where Bay 4 is, and this is the museum. Um, so a lot of our patrons usually just walk through. Um, so that creates a lot of traffic, but mm -hmm. that's one of the ways they can go out. And the classes are also, there are also classes in the museum as well. Then going to this area, this is also, this is above, and this is our Maritime Heritage Room, right in here, and these are our oversized, and these are our thesis collections. But when they come through, they can go straight into the administrative wing, um, which is adjacent to the library as well. So this is the opposite end of this. So when you come through here, you're going to go through this door if you're passing through. And this is from the museum side. This is the museum. This is from the museum side up above. And this is the area that we did all of the weeding um, in the dark area. So they usually can pass through, but we keep a little bit of light. So anyone can walk into the library from any of these entrances. So many different directions, yeah. So many different directions. So um, another thing is, is because we only have one security gate, someone in our, all of our circulation collection is upstairs someone can just take a book and just keep walking. Mm -hmm. So we do have an honor system that we hope, you know, no one is um, taking our materials. So we haven't done inventory yet. So I'm not sure how true that is. 
<laughs> so yes, we have many doors. Yeah. And then also once, oh. yes. So once this is um, the parking lot entrance. Um, so fa staff and faculty can come through this side to enter the library and an administrative wings. But once you go past this stop sign, your cell phone does not work. Hmm. Cell phones do not work in the Ford at all. So we, re we all re rely heavily on our Wi-Fi to use to make phone calls. And then we do have some zones where you can get services, but that those those areas tend to be heavily crowded because everybody wants to use their cell phone. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> once you enter into the Ford cell phone service is no, is mm -hmm. not a factor. How but you do you have um, good internet connection in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the Ford or on the campus to use them, you know? We have okay. Internet service. <laughs> we have okay internet service. Um, you know, I think any in any college, you know, so, you know, service may go in and out, but um, since the wiring is so hard, we have so many Wi-Fi spots. Mm. It's, um, sometimes it's not as great because so many people is getting on it, but most days they're good. It's pretty good. Um, and these stained glass windows is our chapel, so we do have a small chapel on campus. Um, and we do have regular um, services there as well. But then you can also, you sometimes you forget that the cell phones work because you have this pretty, you know, um, scenery of the Throgs Neck Bridge. So sometimes it takes away because there are so many beautiful scenic spots on campus. And if you go to our website, sunnymaritime.edu, they highlight and showcase all of the beautiful um, artwork that we have and just being in the fort. So it's really a beautiful campus. So it's kind of cool to work here, but as you, as I mentioned before, it does have its challenges. So, you know, what can I say? Librarians rule. And even though we have overcome all of these challenges um, and we have them, I still love working here. I still love working with the students. And I always try to make something out of nothing. And whatever we go through here, I always make way and I always make sure each of our patrons are happy. And for that, I like to say all librarians rule because we can make something out of nothing. So thank you very much. And there's my contact. Yeah, great. Okay. All right. So we do have some questions that people have um, uh, typed in as we were as you were talking. And if anyone has anything else you want to ask about or suggestions or ideas, as Shante was saying, some of the challenges they're still having, um, any thoughts or recommendations um, that you might have of how you've done things in your library or ideas you might have, um, go ahead and do that. We still have like 15 minutes left of our time here, so we have plenty of time to talk about stuff. So I'm yeah. going to pull some of these questions. Um, someone know about um, basically the relationship between the library um, staff and the faculty. Um, are the library staff on any um, committees, academic committees, working with the faculty? Do, is there, how kind of communication is there between them as far as assignments and everything? Um, and just um, so, how do you work with the, the faculty of the college? So um, librarians here at SUNY Maritime are considered faculty. So we attend, yes, we're, we're considered faculty. So we attend all of the faculty um, meetings and we're on, each of us are on each committee. So we have a faculty assessment committee, we have a curriculum committee, we have a policies committee. Each of us are on one of those committees. So we're fully involved with committees. With that, we also have a liaison program and with that liaison program, we tried to figure out, I'm the liaison for the global and business and transportation department. So my, you know, our job is trying to just find out what collections they need, what type of library instruction they need. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to do as well with my outreach is trying to build up our library instruction um, because again, since our library is so far, they don't yeah. think of us as a resource. So we're trying to, it's simultaneously, simultaneously trying to promote the library and also promote library instruction, how we can come to the class. So sometimes, most of the times, I have to take that walk. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. But I get my exercise in and I get my steps in. But um, <laughs> outreach is a, one of the biggest factors here. And even though I'm the sole primary contact for outreach, all of us, we all take part in that. So. Yeah, we're trying to, we're truly trying to build that up. Yeah, that's a, something, that was a suggestion, an idea for outreach. I know some, I know some 
some universe, some other universities have the same issue. The campus is just so large at many mm -hmm. colleges and universities, and where where things are situated aren't always the most useful or logical to the students or the staff. Um, I know some libraries have done things like like a pop up library somewhere, like they set up in the campus center or in that science building or something mm -hmm. with a um, semi permanent, I don't know, you know, location, you know, roving reference or something, and say we're going to be there you know, every morning, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday mornings or something as, you know, just to show, yes, we are a thing for you. We can come to you and, you know, right. just have sort of a presence out in another area on campus. Is that anything, you talked about going into the classrooms, is, have you done something like that? Like, you know, I, I know you said you're getting a new student union or something. Yeah, so we're getting in the stu student union because we didn't have one previously. So it's going to be in our Vanderclute Hall, which is right under, right under our cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the student union would be. Um, but as far as trying to be, have more outreach, um, I started with um, a small a little outreach program that I did was called Books on a Roll. So basically I just took a card and I just put some books on it just to get my name out there, get the Steve Milus name out there. But I decided to do that on one of the coldest days of the year. So it, it was, <laughs> It wasn't too fun for me, but um, I did get more, a little bit more traffic, and I did ha make some favorites with that. But yes, I do. I only did books on a roll one time, uh -huh. um, so I don't really have an assessment for that. But I plan on doing it again, and I'll look at the weather. And, Better weather, uh, yeah. Let me say, look at the weather, and then find <laughs> out um, just to get our name out there and do a little bit of outreach. But I love doing things like that, and yeah. um, we're trying to figure out. One of the challenges that I have noticed is trying to reach out to the students, the faculty, and the staff because we serve the entire community and we, you know, we focus tend to focus on faculty or we tend to focus just on students, but we also want to get the staff involved. And that's why um, working with student affairs is one of the biggest things because we want yeah. to work, we want to work on retention. Um, so it's it's reaching out to so many areas and so many avenues. Um, and and I different needs. And right, right. Requirements. Yeah. I can't prioritize who I want to focus on and who I want to, you know, who I want to uh, do more of an outreach to. But I'm just trying to spread, you know, spread it evenly as much as I can. Mm -hmm. There's something I was going to say and then I forgot. Okay. Maybe it'll come back to me. It'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see what we're talking about here now. This traveling source of the world. Okay, and here's a good question. Yeah, um, how do you provide materials? And this is something you're talking about with the ADA issues with your yes. um, circulating collection being above. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you provide the services to the students who, I mean, I don't know if you have people with um, ADA, you know, disability issues, yes. it, what is your process for being able to get those to people who can't get up there or get to, into the building because of those um, limitations? So I work closely with the academic coach, um, academic, um, Anna Manieta, um, and I try to um, find out, so in a nutshell, I haven't really dealt with um, people who have disabilities. It's been people who have um, like, like injuries if they have like a broken bone or a broken arm or something like that and they can't get up the stairs then we'll reach out to the faculty and find out what their what their um what their assignment is and then we'll bring the resource to them um so we haven't really dealt with that i'm not going to say luckily because it may happen and then some you know we may have to deal with it um but that's something that we're working on that's a constant struggle that we're dealing with right now yeah and there's just yeah, and having a historical building, it's you got to work. There's only so much, as you mentioned yes. earlier, that can yes. can even right. be done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and that's another thing that we're trying to uh, trying to establish, getting some grants. Um, as far as that, I know that they're out there. So, if anyone knows of anything, I haven't done any grant writing myself, but just something so we can cover all of our bases. Pretty. Oh much. yeah. You know, so if anyone knows, please email me or call me directly. Um, I'll take all the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, if there's anything you guys have used yourself at your colleges or universities or libraries. Um, that's the thing, too. There's so many different grants. And I know because I handle helping libraries apply for grants here um, in Nebraska. I are, Mainly they come to me for information about for public libraries. But yeah. 
thinking out so there's so many grants that you got to kind of dig down into them to realize oh look they do mention that a you know a public uh, com community resource and libraries are a thing that this could be used for but sometimes when you look at the title of the grant it wouldn't even dawn on you that that's me that I right. can create write up something that would fit their criteria so right. sometimes you gotta just say well it kind of sort of let's read what it says let's see who they've given <laughs> it to before and you just never know when you and sometimes bureaucracy the way they title things it's just you know the legalese that you're it's too dry you know right. mm -hmm. so you just have to read down into it and see yes this fits what i can do right. let's right we gotta read that fine <laughs> that fine print yes yeah, so, mm, so that's something you know I'm, and you know i'm interested in so like i said mm -hmm. if anyone knows or can put me in the right direction with somebody i would greatly greatly appreciate it so are you do you have um budget issues is there cuts being done or is it just you're working with what you have yeah so that so cuts have been done um and we started usually we started with our student workers um we had to start with budget with with um our student workers with that so now um because we're, since we're open till midnight um we will have to ad adjust our times or so um and then we also cut a few of our databases so um yeah we have been uh dealing with a major not major but we have had to cut some things yeah sure it's like you said in the beginning earlier, it's, it's everyone recognizes that. Yes, it's everyone. <laughs> number one, number one, number one, number one without it. Yeah. Um, another question we have here, um, as far as your the, the materials you have in the library, you mentioned a lot of uh, bound volumes, bound um, periodicals. So that's obviously a big, because um, I know so many, you were talking about also technology, so many places libraries are going digital for a lot of the periodicals. You guys still have certain things, I guess, that are, are they not available as digital yet or? So since our, so most of our collection, yeah, so, so most of our collection is maritime based. So our uh -huh. collection is pretty special. Um, so once in a while we'll get those articles that someone needs from like 1993 um, and we, we still hold them here. So another one of our issues is is the bound periodicals are getting too big and they're taking up too much space. They do, yeah. And oh, there's okay. nobody setting up an online databases of those because it's so specialized. Yeah, it's so specialized, yes. Yeah. So that's another one of our issues is spacing. What and and um, and we rely heavily on our um, on our faculty to tell us what to get rid of and what not to get rid of because if you get rid of something, then they're looking for it. So it's okay. never. <laughs> Any, any medium and you know and we still also we when we provide a lot of interlibrary loan as well we have a lot of interlibrary loan requests for these materials and it may not necessarily be from a college it may be from a law firm or maybe from an association that we still try to retain and you know we don't really want to lose out on that you know lose our you know lose, lose our essence with that yeah so that's another one of the issues that we face as well yeah and that's perfect. That was the question I was trying to get into is what input does a faculty have with your material purchase and selection of the materials you have in the library? Yeah, we're trying to we're, we're trying to encourage our faculty to be more digital. Um, you know, we you know, like one of the challenges that we face, we're trying to, you know, encourage them to be more digital. But, you know, a lot of our faculty love that hard copy and there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, for me, you know, sometimes they wait for the hard copy to come in for a newspaper or a periodical. And, you know, I try to encourage them, like, you know, it'll take two seconds if it's if we just go on a database. But, you know, holding on to that hard copy, you know, it's it's, it's challenging. They still want that. They, feel, they, they, want still, that. they still want to hold on to it, which is OK. Oh. I, I, I encourage it. But, you know, certain things, you know, you want instant gratification, but I can't give you instant gratification if the periodical is still in the mail. I can give it yeah. to you. If you want. <laughs> if you're not going to accept this printout from my printer, then you're going to have to wait. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I do a little. I, I I'm kind of in between both those. I love my books, but I have a uh, you know read online, do things online too. I think there's a nice balance. You can have a little both. Yeah. Right. Use right. what works best. Like if you do need something right now, just take the printout. It's okay. <laughs> But, but that time and you're not in a rush or you need to look at the actual original document for some reason make sure yeah. you have that time to wait yeah exactly exactly 
Um, we have another suggestion about the um, outreach, and I don't know what kind of how things are done on campus. You're talking about the cadets walking and you know either walking through campus or around the board edge and whatnot. Um, given the campus layout and distances, could an on-campus traveling service like a bookmobile be something feasible? Like something, it, it, do they have like you know? I don't know, like little golf carts or something that you can drive around, or um, how, do, how do, do do people get around on the island there that way at all? They do absolutely. Facilities and health services actually gets a they they have their own um, little mobiles. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if I don't I'm not sure if, if the library will hold so much weight for us to get one of those, but that would be <laughs> that would be I would love that. It would be um, an easy way to get stuff out you know elsewhere. Yeah. Um, yes. I would, yeah. I would love that. I don't think health services or facilities will let me use theirs. Um, but, um, <laughs> that would be a grant. You can get a grant to get a bookmobile or a grant to get some sort of like a mini something. Yeah. That is, I love that suggestion. Thank you. I would have never even thought about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know there is a Bookmobile and Outreach Association or something. Um, they're actually having their annual conference here in Omaha, Nebraska coming up um, this year. Uh, let me see if I can, I'll try and look up something about that, yeah. Yeah, I have no problem coming to Nebraska for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice here. Sometimes, Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services. I love it, it's great, yes. Um, I... is, is specifically for, so that is I'm, something definitely that, um, and I'll show that when I get on my screen here that you could definitely see what they, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I I, I would have never known about that. So I didn't either until it, and the only reason I knew is because it somehow popped up somewhere in my feeds or something, and only because they have to be coming to Omaha <laughs> this oh. year. I think, and I'd never heard of it as being a thing. I know libraries have bookmobiles and whatnot, but I never heard of it as being an association except for the fact that they happen to be this year's conferences coming to our state. So. Okay. Okay. so yeah. All right. So we're getting close to 11 o'clock here. Time to wrap up. Does, um, oh, I did have one last question and someone I think posted um, uh, that I wanted to ask about is you mentioned the heating and the AC issues in the, in the library, you know, proper itself where all of your books and computers and things are and the, you know, the issues with that. There, it, the, I mean, damage to the books and, and damage and, and having to keep the computers running when the heat is so high is really a concern for me. Um, there's The administration doesn't respond to that as being a major problem. The, uh, it seems like a, a, I mean, I get that it's a, you know, the building issue, but there's obviously other places in the fort where you haven't been able to put in AC and whatnot that you think where the ex materials and things you spent a lot of money acquiring or that are historical would be a more of a priority to keep in good condition. So the area much about it. <laughs> so the areas that need to have, um, it, um, uh, control um, heat control and air um, air control have it. So archives have its own um, cooling okay. unit. We have we have in our offices we have AC. Um, okay. Tech services has AC, but in oh. the general long haul, mm -hmm. to to provide HVAC for that area, I think they're just looking. At, I think they're just seeing dollar signs. So yeah. they're not thinking of how it could be helpful and aid our collection. Mm -hmm. they just see it as another big project. Yeah. So I don't think I think it's on their radar, but I don't know if it's it's a necessity because we've been dealing with this so long as well. Yeah, and you can see from the way um, the building is with those different the different um, sections that yes. how to install something in there is going to be a complex issue too. Right. It's not like it's one big room and it's easy right. to figure out to heat it or not. It's each area is going to need like zoned. Uh, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. You know, it, it's just a headache of thinking about it. And then we have to pull wiring from different areas, and, you know, so I don't know the logistics of it, but that is, is you know, it is Engineer, what it is. Engineers and people with more knowledge of that than us need to be. <laughs> so maybe when we get our maker space, um, maybe that's something that, you know, they will say, maybe we need to have that. So we'll see. You know, yeah, that's, you know. I mean, we're doing a, a program right now here in Nebraska where we're putting makerspace equipment into libraries um, mm -hmm. as a like a, a testing. And there, some of the depending what you're getting, some equipment does require um, venting. Right. Like, 
printers and routers with um, dust and using wood and, and, and everything. And so there is certain things that are required um, right. if you're going to have that piece of equipment in a room anywhere. So that yes. might, you know, maker spaces are big now. So using that as a, if you want us to have a maker space, you're going to have to update something. Yeah. <laughs> We need you need you can have a beautiful maker space and then the rest of the library is just you know yeah. you're gonna make re create one area. I think you might as well just do the whole package. Don't just That's take a, a selling point to them to say everybody wants a maker space. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't look like anybody had any other uh, desperate questions right now. We're a little past eleven o'clock, so this is perfect. Um, just a few uh, comments here. We enjoyed meeting you and seeing your library. So you, sorry you're so far away. People want to visit. Right. I may visit sometime when I'm home. I do try come home uh, at least once a year or so to New York. Yes, yes you can come and visit. You know, it would be really nice. Yeah. Um, so I think we will um, wrap up officially for today then for um, today's show. Thank um, you so thank much. You so, yeah, thank you so much, Shante. This is awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Thank you Absolutely. so much. And you did a great job. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you. Your first webinar. Yes, you can mark, you know, check this off your bucket list. <laughs> um, okay. Great. I was glad to have you on. Um, I didn't mention this at the beginning that, um, for some of you that may know, this was originally submitted to me to be in our Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference that we do. Um, it's every February, and it's specifically um, people from small libraries talking about what's going on in their libraries. And we, it's only a one-day event. You get 12 sessions on, during the day, and I had way more than I could fit into a day. I had like 37 something uh, proposals. So this is one of the many. If you if you come to Encompass Live regularly, you'll see me mention this at least a couple times a month this year. Of that didn't fit into that day, but I want to. I want. I want to know more about it. And I want everyone else to know more about it. So put them on to Encompass Live. Yeah. So I'm glad we were able to get your get you find out all about this and everything. Yes. yes. And see some library. Thank you so much again, Krista. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you. And thank you everyone for attending today. Um, let's see what do we have here. All right. So I'm going to pull presenter control back to my computer screen. Um, so we'll show my screen. You can still stay on here with us. We'll wrap things up. Okay. Um, while you were talking, I updated your info here. So I've got your title correctly now. Oh, thank <laughs> <Instant>. <laughs> So, and then the thing I was talking about, since we are talking about outreach, and that is something that you do there. Um, yeah, this is where I looked up here. The Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services mm, is okay. specifically for people who are involved in doing outreach and um, bookmobiles. So, and um, here is their conference, which, if I'm still correct, is 2019 conference. What does it say what the dates are? Omaha old market deadline is September. When is the actual conference? Sometime this fall. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh. Um, uh, but and you can still get into early bird registration. It looks like. If oh yes, um, we have some days there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anybody who's involved interested in this, whoops, what did I click on? No, I didn't want to do that. So um. So anyone who is interested in outreach and bookmobiles and things, look into this association in general. But um, come and visit Omaha if you want to. Um, coming up in the fall, they have a T-shirt. Oh, looks um, pretty. It looks pretty cool, actually. So Association ABS of Bookmobile and Outreach Services. All right, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I'm going to pop back to our Encompass Live main page here to show you. Um, these are our upcoming shows coming up um, over the next couple of months. But to show you where the archives will be, this is where our archives are. It's just a link right beneath all our upcoming shows. And our most recent one is at the top of the list. This is the one that we did last week. So. Um, Today's recording will be there, and we will have a link to the recording. As I said, it goes to our YouTube channel and the presentation. Shantae, if you want to send me either your presentation or a link to it, um, I think you said yes. yours is right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You just send me. You can just email me the the public link to it, and I will link out to your Google there for the slides. 
Great. Okay. Perfect. Um, so the um, recording will be up here. Everyone who attended today and who registered for today will get an email from me um, probably by the end of the day today, letting you know that the art recording is available and ready to watch. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you all. This is, as you can see here, we have a search feature for our archives. Um, this year, 2019, is the 11th year of Encompass Live. We've been doing this show for a little over 10 years, and we have all of our archives here, all of our shows going back to the first show in 2009. So that's why we have a search feature. You can search the entire archive or just the most recent 12 months. We have really up-to-date sessions. So do pay attention when you are looking at our archives. Just pay attention. Everything has a date. You can see when it was originally broadcast. Uh, just to make sure that um, there will be some information on here because it is 10 years worth of stuff <laughs> that will be old, outdated, websites might not um, exist anymore, links might be broken, services might either have um, no longer exist or have changed completely. Um, but So pay attention to the um, date that something was broadcast. Um, but we are librarians, so this is what we do. We archive things and save them, so they will always be out there as long as YouTube is happy to host our stuff. <laughs> So just be aware of that when you are looking at our archives. Encompass Live is also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page where we do post about it. So if you're a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. Here's a link reminding people to log into today's show. Um, and whenever our recordings are ready, we post them up here. When um, a new show is coming up, we post up here. So if you want to keep up with us, um, get notifications from Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, other than that, I hope you join us for a next week's show, which is Pretty Sweet Tech. This is our new monthly session done by our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, Amanda Sweet. It's Pretty Sweet Tech. You get it? Get that? <laughs> um, where she talks about anything tech related. And next week, she's going to talk about building yourself a clean, user friendly library website. So if you have a website that you want, if you don't have one, you want to get one, or if you want to, um, freshen up the one you do have, sign up um, and join us next week and Amanda can help you out with that. And please do sign up for any of our other future shows we have coming up here. Usually we have a couple of months um, planned out. You'll see new ones coming on all the time. Um, so that, way, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Shante, for joining us here this morning. And hopefully yep. we'll see you on um, another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.